if you don't think EVs are having any impact, a lot of people don't. They, they say, you know what, Sam, mate, there's just not enough EVs being sold. It, it, this makes no difference really to the global car scene. Everyone really, I mean, look at the car fleets, right? The world's car fleets, they're primarily internal combustion. But if that were true, if that really were honestly, genuinely true, if we hadn't made a difference with new EV sales, then why is the oil market saying we have? Why is the oil industry saying demand is falling? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Big thank you to our Patreon supporters, YouTube members, guys. Great. So, so thankful for you guys. To support the channel means everything to me, and it makes it, it actually does, is what makes this possible. So what is going on here? Well, first of all, if you'd like to support the channel as a member or on Patreon, I'll put a link in the description. Second of all, Brent oil has tumbled below 70 US dollars amid oversupply fears. Now, I don't know about you, but I've noticed gas stations, petrol stations, as we call them here in Australia, prices I've noticed have fallen significantly in the past week or two. Brent futures dropped below 70 US dollars a barrel for the first time since December 2021. So that's what, nearly three years. And what is going on? Why is this happening? There's a very good reason. The industry is seeing, uh, they believe, they say this, demand concerns and rampant speculative selling. Rampant speculative selling. Investors are saying, uh, yeah, you know what? The Volkswagen Group, Toyota, they're lying. Actually, EV sales are disrupting the entire car market. Basically, demand for oil is going to continue to fall and they're selling out. They don't want to be at the point where, oh, hang on a minute, we, we waited too long. We invested in a coal power station. We waited too long. We invested in a, a new coal mine in 2025. How dumb is, are the people that are still holding on to this stuff? And I, I don't know if I should feel sorry for these people because so many billions of dollars will be lost. Anyhow, the global benchmark fell as much as 3.8%, while West Texas Intermediate Crude slid as much as 4.2%, hitting the lowest intraday price for years. Downbeat economic data from the US and China, including weak import figures released Tuesday, have stirred fears about oil demand in the top two consuming countries, adding to concerns that a surplus will emerge next year. That's compounded by surging output in producing nations outside the organization of petroleum exporting countries. Now, a bit, a lot of the problem here, guys, is demand in China is going down because China is electrifying their entire car fleet. Obviously, 1.35 billion citizens, those citizens, right, are moving away from filling their cars up with petrol every day to charging them with electricity. I mean, 55% of all sales in China, of vehicle sales in China over the last two weeks, have been EVs, 55%. So that figure will probably hit 100%, and many analysts are saying it will happen by 2027, meaning demand in the country that buys the most cars by a mile, uh, in fact, 10 million more every year than the US market. That's how big it is, it's astronomical. Take the US car market, add an extra 10 million sales, that's China, right? So if demand for gasoline goes down significantly in China, which, well, it is, then what happens? Well, this is what happens, oversupply, prices fall. China import export numbers implied demand destruction, demand destruction in the number one important country in the world, said Robert Yorga, director of the Energy Futures Division at Mizuho Securities USA. So guys, I know people sometimes say that, oh, you're exaggerating, you're being too optimistic. I didn't write this. So please, please, Tell your friends, this is a direct quote. I'm not making this up. China import export numbers implied demand destruction in the number one importing country in the world. This is just the beginning. This is the literal beginning of this demand destruction. This demand destruction is only going to get more destructive. And while well, it's going to eventually put into bankruptcy many companies around the world, many petroleum producers, you know, many countries actually the, the revenue that they get from oil is going to be slashed the revenue of the companies like exxon Mobil, bp shell all these companies that they make is going to essentially collapse 
The bearish rut comes despite the OPEC Plus Alliance postponing its original plan to add 180,000 barrels a day next month as it gradually restarts output that was halted since 2022. So they halted output, many of the large scale oil refineries in 2022, right? And they're saying, well, in the end of 2024, we're gonna resume that output because you'd think COVID's over, demand's gonna go up again. We're gonna add that 180,000 bar- barrels back in. But now they're saying, uh, there's a demand collapse already. So who's gonna buy that extra 180,000 barrels? I've got no idea. Even after changing the output plan, OPEC kept its demand forecast steady in a market outlook released this week. The International Energy Agency, which previously forecast a surplus next year, um, are saying there will be a surplus next year. So (laughs) the market's increasingly bearish tone spurred Wall Street banks to pair price cuts for the coming quarters. The tone of the oil market is downbeat, said Norbert Rucker. He went on to say the fundamental headwinds will persist. Demand is stagnant, production grows in the Americas, and the oil market likely heads into significant supplies next year. As I said, this is the beginning of the end. It's the tipping point. Thanks for watching.